Good morning, our Facebook viewers and listeners. We welcome you to the This American Missionary Baptist Church once again, where God is truly real in this place. We welcome those uh, new viewers on the, on the line, and we welcome you to our service where God is great. We welcome Mount um, Susie Watts' inspirational choir as they Amen. do inspirational songs to us today. Amen. Uh, we're going to bring up uh, Reverend uh, Taylor to do our prayer and our scripture. And again, welcome to our house. Amen. 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 What another day to be here. That's our good gift for. I'll be coming from Jeremiah. The 29th chapter. We will go to a familiar scripture. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, and the 11th verse. Amen. So good to see you today. Amen. And it reads, For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plan for peace and well-being and not for disaster. To give you future and to give you hope. Let us pray, church. Lord, we come to you today want to say thank you. Lord, we want to say thank you Amen. for keeping us and guiding us to this day, Lord. Yes. As we look back over our life, Lord, we have so much to be thankful for, Lord. Yes. Yes. We see that you put food on our tables, yes. clothes on our backs, Heavenly yes. Father. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. To so our Lord, as we come to this service today, Lord. With high expectations, Lord. Yes. Knowing that heaven found that you can show up in this place. Yes. Just like you can show up into that person's home right now at the same time, Lord. Yes. Bless that something is said, something is done right now. To make somebody say, you know what? I'm gonna change my life for you. Yes. So now, Lord, we ask you for you, Lord, please be in this place. Yes. Bless the squire as they sing it today. Yes. Bless the musicians as they play fires yes. to you right now, Lord. And please, Lord, bless our pastor, Lord, yes. as he delivered the word of Christ, the word of God to your people. Yes. Lord, we love you, and thank you, the Lord, we are expecting a blessing today, Lord. We are expecting a miracle today, Lord. We are expecting for lives to be transformed right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. So right now, Lord, we ask for you, please, Lord, just whoever is watching and viewing today, Lord. Bless them and God them. Let them know, Heavenly Father, that even though we are in the distance, Lord, that you are close to them, Lord. Yes. We love you and thank you for what you're going to do today, Heavenly Father. In your name, we give you all the praise and glory. Amen, amen, amen.
church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. How many of you got a new walk amen. and a new talk? Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for Jesus. Amen. amen. We greet you in none other than that matchless and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. First giving honor to God who is the head of our life to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who hung dead and died on Calvary's cross and arose yes, on the third yes. day Thank with all power in his hands. Amen. amen. To our comforted teacher and guide, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Who convicts us of wrong and brings to our remembrance whatsoever those things we have been taught through the word of God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Praise in this place. Amen. We want to recognize this melodious choir. Amen. We have heard our hearts. Amen. With the songs of Zion. Amen. And each of you, our fathers, children in your respective places. Amen. Our media ministries, our diaconic ministries, our health ministries, ushers, and deacons and trustees, amen, to amen. our health ministry, all of those of you who contribute, amen, to the functionality and overall well-being of those who are the people of God, amen, to, amen, my lovely wife, First Lady Bias, we thank God for you, amen, and greet you with a holy kiss, amen, yesterday, I had to take First Lady Bias riding, amen, had to get out of the house, amen, she, she was being closed in, amen, had to get us some sunshine, and it's something, amen, when sunshine needs sunshine, amen, hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve, amen, we will try not to trouble you long, amen, but we want to put out a, a note of administration, amen, to those of you who are watching us by way of Facebook and YouTube and any other streaming means out there that might be, amen, but upon the conclusion of the word of God, Today we will be going into our Holy Communion, amen, that Holy Communion where we do this in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we will quickly move, and so we ask, amen, that you get uh, those elements that you are going to use, whether it be water, grape juice, or uh, apple cider, amen, that we might uh, pray over it with you, amen, as we proceed, amen, into our Holy Communion, amen, amen, and amen. Also, we want to continue to love upon and give our condolences, amen, to the Craig family, amen, and to the Butler family and the loss of their dear sister, amen, and to the Singleton family, amen. And then I want to say as your pastor, amen, you keep on blessing me, amen, and we are so thankful and grateful unto God to be here to share with you, amen, in this ministerial experience here by way of the Good Samaritan Missionary Baptist amen. Church, amen. Uh, having said that, amen, we'll try not to trouble you long. We would that you turn to the book of Judges, the book of Judges, and there find chapter number two, amen, and we want you, amen, to go to that sixth verse, Judges chapter two, verse six, amen, Judges chapter two, verse six, amen, Judges chapter two, verse six, amen, hallelujah, me and this microphone, we're going to have a good time after a while, hallelujah, <laughs> Judges chapter two, verse six, and we're going to read in your hearing, amen, from the King James Version of the Bible from ch ch Judges chapter 2 down to verse 12. And we do solicit your prayers, amen, that God might have his way, that the Holy Ghost might show up in this place, amen. Those of you that have the word of God, amen, let us signify by saying amen. 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 Hallelujah. And the word of God reads, and when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people of God served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being an hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Harez in the Mount of Ephraim on the side, north side of the hill Gaash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and though there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, 
nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Our last verse. And they forsook the Lord their God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. The word of God for the people of God. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. A wise and eternal God, creator and sustainer of all life. How humbled we are with the thankful prism, privilege, O oh God, of calling upon your name. As you gather us in this place today, O oh God, we come with thanksgiving in our heart and with a listening ear that we might hear what thus saith the Lord. Teach, O oh God, lead us, O oh Holy Spirit, that we might walk in the ways of righteousness. We pray, O oh God, now as we come in this house, God, that our hearts have been prepared for that which you are about to serve. Yes. O oh God, do what you must. Yes. Do it how you please. Yes. But whatever you do, God, have your way. Yes. Now, Father, I pray for this waiting congregation that you would look upon us, O oh God, and fill us with your everlasting presence. Yes. Let your Holy Spirit have free course and free reign. Dip this thy servant down in the storehouse of knowledge that I might preach your word with clarity power, simplicity, and accuracy yes. by way of the anointing and power of your Holy Ghost. Yes. And then, Father, likewise, I pray that as your spoken word goes through forth by the power of your Holy Spirit, yes. you would quicken our mortal bodies, O oh God, and empower us, equip us, make us effective as laborers in your finger, yes. that you might be glorified, the devil horrified, and that we might rejoice in your presence. We thank you and we praise you now, God. And ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated in the house of God for the next few moments that God has given us to spend together in this house. I want to talk from the thought, all is not as it seems. When all is not as it seems. Amen. I believe I heard Reverend Cleo, she was talking about music, amen, and how she oftentimes listens to music, but she does not always remember, amen, the singers of the songs. Well, I like Reverend Cleo, Cleo have a, a fetish, amen, for movies, amen, and one such movie that captivated my attention is a movie that was on the airways some time ago that went by the name of Soul Food. Perhaps you remember Soul Food. It was a movie about us, our kind of people. A movie that uh, uh, talked to us about heartaches and troubled times. It talked to us about separations and difficulties within the black homes as well as communities. But the thing that arrested my attention in this movie was a character that went by the name of Big Mama. Maybe y'all don't remember Big Mama, so I want to elaborate just a little bit. Big Mama was the glue, come on somebody, that held the family together. Big Mama's house was where they met when they wanted to have a meal. Big Mama's house was when they met when they needed guidance. Big Mama's house was where they went when they needed instruction and comfort. It was Big Mama's house on Sunday that they all sat down at the same table, amen, eating a meal and conversing among themselves. But I want to suggest to you that not everything in life is as it seems. As long as Big Mama was alive, the family was held together. Together. As long as Big Mama was alive, amen, they ate Sunday meals, amen. As long as Big Mama was alive, they exhibited love and genuine respect towards one another. But the one thing that I learned in life that is sure, brothers and sisters, is that the Big Mamas in our lives don't live forever. Where you going with this preacher? I said Big Mamas don't live forever. And when Big Mama dies, somehow it allows the real you to come out. I'm trying to help somebody. Brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say is not everything is what it appears to be. Sometimes when you look at something, amen, on the outside, it appears to be a well-oiled machine. But if you take a few moments every now and then to pop the hood and see what's inside, you'll find out that there are some things that are out of order, some things that don't work the way they should work, and some things that work against those things that are simply trying to help them. This is the case in our text. We find mm -hmm, that one leader that goes by the name of Joshua, help me if you will, Holy Ghost, 
Joshua is like Big Mama to Israel. As long as Joshua was alive, the Bible says that the people did that which was right in the sight of God. The people would praise God. The people would serve God. And may I suggest that there are some in the church like this, that when your Big Mama died, mm -hmm, your service to God was no longer what it used to be. I'm going somewhere. Brothers and sisters, you need to learn that Big Mama dies. Uh -huh. And when we look at this text, there are three things very quickly that I want to lift. Our text reveals the sad reality mm -hmm, of one of God's great men and leaders mm -hmm, in the lives of his people, one whom God used in a mighty way. Joshua was that same man that said, if the Lord be for us, come on somebody, who can be against us? We're well able to go into the land. When they had to stand up and face mm -hmm, their enemies, uh -huh, when it looked like all hell was breaking loose, when it looked like they had not the power to stand and face the enemies, when everybody else was saying we're like grasshoppers in their sight, it was Joshua and Caleb that said, amen, we surely, our God is able. And I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that Joshua was one of those that loved God. In fact, when Moses died, it was Joshua that was promoted to the position of leadership because God saw something in Joshua. He had been grooming Joshua for, for such a time as this. And I want you you to hear me child of God and hear me clearly. Mm -hmm. You can't just put anybody in a position of leadership. Joshua was connected to God and therefore when trouble came, he said be of good courage. Come on somebody. As I was with my servant Moses, so shall I be with you. And I came by here to tell somebody you need some Joshua's in your life. But here it is brothers and sisters if we look at our text, I want you to grab something from this and don't you miss it. Point number one what it reveals to us the importance of teaching. Can I go back to the text for a moment? When we look at the text, the text, text tells us mm -hmm, as long as Joshua was alive and the elders mm -hmm, that was with him, the children of God followed God. Mm -hmm. but, but, but what it implies is that as soon as Joshua died, as soon as that generation that our contemporaries of Joshua had died, that the children that called themselves of God really were the children of the world. I'm trying to help somebody. And don't you get it twisted, my dear brother and sister? There are some in the church today that are simply not trusting in God. They don't believe in God. They don't honor God. They simply praise God because they've been raised in a house and taught to do so. I'm trying to help somebody. And I found out a long time ago, you can teach a parent to talk. I'm trying to help somebody. If you talk long enough, a parent... The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. But he no more loves God any more than the man of the moon. I'm trying to help somebody. And I got a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion that there are many that come to the house of God every Sunday wearing great titles, amen, and flaunting uh, their weight around the church, amen, but have not the love of God. The reality, the sad reality, brothers and sisters, is this. It is important for us to teach. The Bible says train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old he'll not depart from it and I want to suggest to you that sometimes brothers and sisters the reason our children don't love God is because we don't love God I'm trying to help somebody you see it's easy to push it off on the side to somebody else but we growing up in a dangerous generation a selfish generation a generation that also does not know God a generation that have heard the songs of Zion that have heard the word of God that have clapped in the church on Sunday morning but have not relationship with him. Yes, I'm going it. somewhere. It. It's important for us to learn yes. that we need to train our children. And I can't tell you how many times, sadly, mm -hmm, that I've heard parents say, well, I'm not going to force God on them. I'm going to let them make their own decisions. And I can't help but wonder why in my sanctified mind you going to let a 7-year-old, a 9-year-old, a 12-year-old make up their mind when it comes to serving the Lord. You, 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 you push them off to the best schools that you can find. Mm -hmm. You give them the best clothes that you can buy. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you tell them not to stick their hand in the fire and you 
train them around dangerous things, but when it comes to them, mortal and eternal soul, you let them make up their own mind. I submit to you that we need to be taught. And brothers and sisters, there's something in this text that I need you to grab. These people mm -hmm, that had came out of the wilderness, these people that had been blessed by God, the text says now they are uh -huh, dividing up the land and going to their own homes. Here it is. They are still uh -huh, receiving the blessings of God while they are disrespecting God. I'm trying to help somebody. You see, it's possible, brothers and sisters, to have overflow when it comes to the blessings of God. Yeah. That God will bless mm -hmm, your children and your what? Children's children. Not because of what you did or because you're so worthy, but because you had a relationship with God. Yeah. And now they're walking in the overflow. They are receiving their inheritance. And even as they are, they had already forgotten God. For the Bible says there arose another generation that knew not the Lord God. Brothers and sisters, there is an important part is in us teaching our children about the things of God. Uh, so right was the words of God when he said that when you sit around your tables, mm -hmm, when you're around your house, that you should bind them as fartlets. Come on, somebody. You should put it as lentils over the doorpost. Come on, somebody. I, I was watching last night this little girl on YouTube, on uh, uh, Facebook, amen, and uh, this little girl was doing a praise dance. She didn't have a big crowd uh, with her as she was dancing. Mm -hmm. This little girl just heard the music and she was in the house of the Lord. And as she was in the house of the Lord, and this little girl didn't feel as strange because she had been comfortable where she was. I'm trying to help somebody with the same preacher. I'm trying to say too many times the reason our children don't shout and jump, the reason our children don't dance and sing in the church, when you put the microphone in front of them is because you haven't exposed them to the things of church. They feel out of their element, out of their place. Take that same child, put them on a football field, put them on a basketball court. They know how to spike the ball. They know how to moonwalk. Hi, mom and hi, dad. I'm trying to help somebody. But what I want to know is, did you train your child in the way that they should go? This little girl got up there in a church full of folk. She recognized them not as strangers, but as family. Because out of the mother's womb, she was already in the church. I'm trying to help somebody. And this little girl began to dance with passion and vigor and fire. If you don't believe me, go to Bruce Byers' Facebook page. Because I tried to share with everybody I know. You see, when you train up a child and the way they should go. When they come to God's house, they won't feel ashamed, but they'll feel at home. But when you know God for yourself, you know you can come into his house, enter into his gates for Thanksgiving. Come on, somebody. And it's course with praise. Have a one witness in here. Is there anybody in here that can stand up and testify that the Lord will make a way somehow? Come on, somebody. Did you ever have to tell your neighbor? He walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I'm his own. Is there anybody in here that says, I got good religion? Huh? I've been to the water, huh? been baptized, huh? holding your spirit, why baptized? Huh? And I'm running, come on, somebody. Boy, my life don't get happy now. I'm, I'm trying to go to point number two. The text tells us that they did not know God. They did not know God. Now, here's the thing that got me tripping. They, they, they were with their mothers and fathers. Their mothers and fathers had witnessed all that God had done. They were the generation that God brought across the, the, the Jordan River. They were the generation that God crossed uh, the, the Red Sea on dry land. They were the generation that witnessed the plague that got to the Egyptians. They were the generation that God fed with manna. They were the generation that God made a way out of nowhere. But yet their children did not know the Lord thy God. And I said, Admit to you, my brothers and my sisters, it's possible to bring your child to church. It's possible to put Sunday go to meeting clothes on them. It's possible they meant to put them in the Christmas play or the Easter parade. I wish I had some help in here. And still not teach them who God is. You see, the reason that God gets so angry is because he gave up so much. I wish I had some help in here. He came down one, two, forty, and two generations. I'm glad and died on a cross called Cameron. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed and I came to tell somebody that God wants intimacy, he's not looking for you to just know his name with head knowledge
knowledge, but he's wanting you to know his name relationally. I'm trying to help somebody. You see, that word know means yada. Yada means, uh-huh, to know somebody exponentially, uh, uh, experientially, rather. It means to know a person, mm -hmm, uh-huh, relationally, uh-huh. It means to have intimacy with yes. the person. Uh, can I drop it on you like it's hot? Oh, Here's what the Bible says. Oh, yeah. And Yada, and she conceived and bare a child out of his knowledge of him. They brought forth a human life. There was intimacy in the bedroom between a husband and a wife, and out of that relationship, there was birthed a child. And I got a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion that ain't nothing being birthed out of our knowledge of Jesus Christ except our chest being puffed out, except our heads being held high, We're running around like tip top tidy with a swollen up head and a jacked up. Body. He said, I don't know you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. For I never knew you. I wish I had some help in here. And I'm so hurt and sad and disappointed that when we come to the house of God, the things that we do are not to give our God praise. I know we got singers that can sing like angels and preachers that can preach the socks off anybody. But if you don't have a relationship with God, can I tell you what it looked like? Over in the book of Acts, there's a man by the name of the Apostle Paul. And Paul, Paul was casting out demons, and he was doing it, guess what, y'all? In Jesus' name. And then there arose certain sons of a part of the house of Sceva, who had been around Paul. They had seen what Paul did, and they tried to do what Paul did. And they came across one that had been demon possessed and when they tried to cast them out they said the very words that the apostle Paul said I adjure you come out demon in the name of Jesus but I came by here to tell somebody if you don't know him for yourself his name does not leave your lips with power if you don't know him for yourself you can't do his mighty works if you don't know him for yourself what you do does not give God glory. And the Bible says that that demon rose up. He said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? And I came by here to tell somebody. If the thing in the church is not as it seems, we still got folk that are not giving God praise. We got folk having meetings after the meeting. I wish y'all helped me in here. I'm trying to go somewhere. In God's house, they got a meeting before the meeting and a meeting after the meeting. Y'all know why, church? Do y'all know why, church? Because it's their way on the highway. I wish I had some help in here, but as I hasten to my clothes, I came by here to tell somebody that I'm so glad that I serve a God that still looks beyond my faults. Serve those gods in whose 
know that God is worthy of our praise. And I don't know about you, but I came by here to tell somebody, I want to do it God's way so God can have his way in me. If we delight ourselves in him, he'll give us the desires of our heart. If we want to fix this church, we got to do it God's way. We got to stop having meetings after meetings before the meeting and go through God's process. If I was really going to preach hard, I'll tell you a story that took place right after AI. When they went to AI, the Bible says that they went up in the, in the city there and they said, well, Joshua, we don't need you to send all the children of God for they are just a little city. I'm going somewhere, but all we need to do is take a few thousand and we'll show up in victory. But the Bible says when they climbed up on that hill, when they got into that city, that the enemy gave chase and Israel took tail and run. What are you trying to say, Brother Baez? I'm trying to tell you God establishes leadership. They told Joshua what they were going to do, and God didn't put them in charge. He put Joshua in charge. But let me peep this for a moment. After they came down the hill, after they had took tail and run, after they had experienced defeat, Joshua laid down before the Lord, and he said, Lord, 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 Oh, my Lord, tell me, tell me, what should I do? And God gave Joshua what I call a divine strategy. He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take the people on tomorrow, not just some, but I want you to take them all. And then when you get there, I want you to go into the city just like they did last time. But this time, I want you to take some people and lay them in the side of the ditch. I wish I had some help in here. And those people were laying down in the side of the ditch. About 3,000 rumbled into the city. They met those Amalekites. They took tail and they ran. And as they were running, the folk in the ditch got up from behind, burned down their houses. When they turned around and saw the smoke, they were caught between Joshua on this side and the liars in wait on this time. And I came by here to tell you, if you want to experience victory in your life, in your home, in your church, you better learn how to do it God's way. Just because, just because you meet with a little success, it can be messed up just like that. The Bible says a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. And brothers and sisters, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I believe with all my heart that there was a great foundation that has been poured in this place. I believe in my heart that the problem is, and this is what the text went on to say, that when they got into the land, y'all with me so far? Yeah. When they got into the land, that they started worshiping the gods of the people that was there. Yeah. Don't you miss that? Yeah. See, you can be hooked up with some folk that don't worship Yahweh, Amen. don't worship Jehovah, and they worship strange gods. As a matter of fact, they gave them names, Asterisk, Baal. And, and, and these were pagan gods. Yeah. And, 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 and I keep trying to build on something that God hadn't given me to release yet. Sometimes what you associate with can bring displeasure All right, to God. Amen. Let me, let me, I, I, don't, I don't want you to think I'm making this up. Right, right, right there, right there, it says in verse 14, mm -hmm. and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. Yes. And he delivered them what? And the into the, the hands of the spoilers that spoiled yeah. them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not stand any longer before they were in there. There is something terribly wrong when, as a child of God, all you're experiencing is defeat. I'm trying to help somebody. If all you're experiencing is defeat, one of two things is taking place. One, God desires to get your attention. Or two, God is proving you for a greater assignment. Right. And you need to find out which one it is. And here's what the real message is <clears throat> for us, not them. To look in the mirror mm -hmm. of God's word right. and see what we really wear. Because see, this, this don't mean jack. That's right. This don't mean jack. You can buy it at a store. Mm -hmm. 
But you can't buy the righteousness of God for any price. You cannot buy the righteousness of God. Good Samaritan, we need everybody in their lane contributing to the upbuilding of God's kingdom. What do you mean, preacher? At home, you need to regurgitate what you read in the Bible. You need to demonstrate it in the lives of your children. And you need to hold them equally as accountable as you hold yourself to God. That, that, then when they come into church, first of all, they'll know how to act. Secondly, they'll know what to expect. And thirdly, they'll respond the right way. And what happened here was sometimes people can get so busy fighting the enemy that they forget to pass on what was passed on to them. What do you mean, preacher? Oh, baby, I'm so tired. I, I want to read the Sunday school lesson, but I'm going to sleep. See, the enemy will always put you to sleep. He'll always put you to sleep when it comes to the spiritual things in life. But if somebody says, yo, dog, man, they bumping at the club in the head. Hey, hey, hey. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Huh? Joker, get down to the club one o'clock in the morning. Party don't get started at the left I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Yeah, and until we really yes, learn how to discern God yes, Lord. and do the will of God, we're going to be susceptible to the enemies in the land. I, I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Everything yeah. is not always as it seems. And it's not my job to look you in the eye and tell you that's you or that's you or that's you. If it comes down to that, it is. But the real thing yeah. is to love God enough to go to him yourself yes, and ask him, search me, O oh Lord, and know my heart. Try me and see if there be any iniquity within me. That's when God says, I'm so glad you came. Sit down, son, daughter. Let me have a talk with you. I know you've been going to church. You love church. The problem with Big Mama was that their faith was never in God. It was in Big Mama. And when Big Mama died, didn't have a relationship with God because they did not die, die him. They right. never had a relationship right. with me. Right. Amen. The doors of the church are open. Maybe there's one under the sound of my voice that does not know the Lord.